but it's coming. And we, the people, are going to prevail. There's no doubt in my mind about that, particularly, particularly every day. You know, it's so funny. Everybody attacks President Trump because of his 39, 40% rating. But what's the rating of the Congress? 14%. And what have they accomplished? Nothing. Zero. Nada. Nothing. The people are catching on to this. And it's about time, actually, it's past time. But living in Hawaii, we all know that we have an interesting situation here. First of all, I completed 20 years in the Senate, but as was said, for the last six years, I was the only legislator in the United States that was a one-member minority. People used to laugh at that, but we got bills passed. We got bad bills killed. We got bills modified. We got bipartisan support for some of the things that we did. But we always had a consistent message. And the reason I'm so happy to be here tonight and admire our speaker is because fiscal responsibility is what it is. It's not a shortage of revenue. The new Tax Review Commission came out, maybe you saw the headline story in the Monopoly Advertiser a month ago. <laughs> tax Review Commission calls for new taxes. We don't need new taxes. We need spending reductions and controls. But nobody's listening there. I said three years ago, and I maintain today, we are absolutely on course with Puerto Rico that went bankrupt. We are going to do it, folks, because the money is not coming in. The raises that the public union workers get are outrageous and obscene. And I'm sorry to say that a number of Republicans vote for those raises as well, as well as tax and increases and other things. I want to give you a little historical perspective, though, why I'm so interested in the Convention of the States. Hawaii passed its current constitution in the Constitutional Convention of 1950. And one of the things that were put in our constitution that very few states have is a provision that every 10 years, we the people shall be asked do you want a constitutional convention every 10 years? The first one was held in 1968. The second one was held in 1978. That was the one that gave us John Y. Hay, the Crooked OHA, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, union benefits and control, and a lot of other monopolies. But guess what? After 1978, these wise men and women said to us, you know, we've got everything we need now. We don't need any more constitutional conventions. So when the question came back in 1988, and we voted for it, the United Public Workers Union went to court. And in a landmark decision, we found out that once again, we in Hawaii are unique. Because the court ruled that even though the people overwhelmingly voted for a constitutional convention, there were more blank ballots. And in Hawaii, on a constitutional convention election, blank ballots equal no. Only state in the union. Only kind of election. Doesn't happen in other elections, but it happens there. So 1988 went by, no convention. 1998, no convention. 2008, no convention. We got the question coming up next year. I urge you to support our state convention and also the convention of the states. We see that the power that Washington has taken from us gradually, if it had happened overnight, we would have revolted. But gradually we get used to it and people benefit from it. And unfortunately, we find that this usurpation of power does not go by the name Democrat or Republican. It's the insiders versus we the people. They don't trust us. They don't think we can take care of ourselves. And unfortunately, many of our citizens have sold out their liberty and their freedom for a little temporary security. In the end, as Franklin said, they'll have neither. But we still have the opportunity to turn things around. And one of the best vehicles to do that is with Convention of the State. So I urge your active support. I urge you to talk to people about it. Most people don't understand Article 5. They're certainly not going to get it in the school system, not going to get it on the college campus. That's part of our responsibility. 
education and helping young people. So that's what we're going to do because Hawaii does have a good future and the United States of America, I want to be around to celebrate our 300th anniversary. So thank you again very much for coming and uh, you're going to enjoy this program. And at this point, it gives me great honor to introduce our very special guest speaker. We thank him for coming all the way. Although he's just an Okie from Muskogee, right? Yeah, he was born in Muskogee, Oklahoma. And he got a, he got a college degree in accounting, but figured the numbers didn't add up. He managed a family business that was so successful, they sold optical items. They went from three employees to over 350 employees. When the business was sold, he decided to go to medical school. Are we glad he did? He became a family physician, and he delivered over 4,000 babies. Quite an achievement in itself. But wait, he's not done. He's not done yet. He ran for and was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. And he made a pledge to the voters. I'm only going to serve six years, three terms. And he did. And then he walked away from it. How can you walk away from all those perks and everything else? And, the gym and the subway and all that stuff. But he did. And he continued his private practice. And then several years later, he ran for the U.S. Senate, making the same pledge about walking away. He served on many important committees, but his real love was fiduciary, budget, finance. He knew how to control the budget. He knew how to control spending. And he was always forthright, always the first one out there to talk about it. He took a lot of flack and a lot of heat from the insiders who, they just want to get along. They want to be part of the club. They enjoy the benefits. They enjoy where they are and, and what they get. But he did all of that. And along the way, he found time to write several best-selling books. I hope you brought some books that we can buy tonight. Did you? Did you bring some books with you? I don't think we got it. Well, you're a lousy marketer, then. You're a good, good author and all that, but we'll have to help you with that. Logistics. Yeah, logistics. But we do appreciate him for coming. And he's so interesting in so many ways, and I'll overlook the fact that he was personal friends with Barack Hussein Obama, although they disagreed, what, 95% of the time? Oh, a lot higher than that. A lot higher. <laughs> See, I lived in the same building with him in Honolulu, so I know him quite well. Lucky he wasn't in jail. Uh, anyway, <laughs> this man has done so much, and he continues to do things. And I was struck by the fact that when he was first approached about the convention of the stakes, he had a lot of questions and a lot of concerns. And now he's full on, and he's helping all of us, because this is the way to go. We, the people, couldn't have a greater champion than Dr. Tom Colbert. Huh? I'm going to make this a whole lot less formal, and I'm going to say that you have to change something to change it, but I, what I want us to do is have a visit. Uh, and uh, I, I got involved in this because I'm actually selfish. I have eight grandchildren and one on the way. My 44-year-old daughter had the biggest surprise of her life when she found out at 44 she was pregnant. That's number nine. Uh, so, so my motivations are really two or three things. One is this country's been great to so many people for so many years because of the sacrifice of so many people. Number two is we have a moral obligation to our kids and the generations that follow us to at least pass on a good portion of the heritage that was given to us. And, and I got into politics. You know, I had a thriving practice. I spent every other night at the hospital for 20 years. I loved delivering babies, taking care of grandmas, sitting bones, doing gallbladder surgery. I, I like all that. But I like what our country has better than what I like in my own life. So I jumped into a race in a, in a, a district that was 84% Democrat. My, it had never been won by a Republican except in 1920, and she was defeated two years later. 
And I did it because I saw slipping away what I was taught by my grandparents and my parents, which was the most fertile, promising opportunities of any group of people anywhere in the world. And so I went and served, and I came home. I was happy to limit my terms because, quite frankly, the team I signed up for was doing things different than what they told the American people they were going to do. That was the Republicans. And I got talked into running for the Senate four years later, and I did. And I thought, well, as a senator, you have quite a bit more power. Maybe I can make more of a difference there. And so I, I, I spent 10 years in the Senate, and I left two years early. And I'll tell you why I left two years early. Because the problems of this country are not going to get fixed by the career politicians in Washington. You know who's going to fix them? We are. And so we, we have about 30 people here tonight. And 30 people is a great core group to change anything. But the, the important things is what are our core values and how do we, I'm going to, by the way, Pastor Porter, I'm going to bring you with me every time I have a town hall from now on. Great prayer. How do we change it? We change it by, and I'll come back to what Sam said, I don't have a lot of agreement with President Obama, but what I'm taught is if you really want to change somebody, you've got to love them. Even when they push you back, even when they do things you don't like, you still love them. Uh, because there's nothing in my life that's perfect, and I've made my fair share of errors in my life, and I'm still loved by our Creator. So that's the model that we're given. So as we go about trying to do this, we have to keep in perspective how we do it. And so I don't get mad at people when they don't agree with me. I don't get mad when they say, well, you're crazy, you can't do this. What I do is just get more determined. And so you take this group of people here tonight, and if each of you 